So what do you think about when I say the word God? What comes into your mind? You hear the phrase, God loves you. What is it that pops in your head? Or, or even better yet, when you hear this phrase, God is your father, like, what do you hear? We all have experiences in our lives that taint and, and shape the way we think about God. When I say that God is a loving heavenly father, that might be very hard for some of us in the room to comprehend because we never knew our father here on earth. Maybe our father on earth didn't know how to love us, didn't know how to love our mother. Maybe the concept of God in your heart and your mind has been shaped by some very negative experiences with people who are following God or a church. You know, this is an uncommon experience for people to not know how to think about God, especially as Father. In fact, when Jesus came and walked on this earth, kind of God in the flesh, he knew that to expose people to the idea of this God of the universe, the Creator God as Father, would be very difficult for people to understand. So he told a story one day to help people understand the nature of God as Father. He told a story of a father who had two sons. Imagine the firstborn son was a type A personality. Everything in a row, did everything right all the time. When dad said, do this, he did it. He looked forward to being a part of the family business. He was that kind of perfect kid. And I think the second son was probably more of a free spirit. Maybe the son thought on his own, liked to try some things, liked to push the boundaries. If the line was here, they would just step over it enough times. But the father loved both sons, but the one son felt a little confined. And, and as much wealth as this father had, as much love as his father had, probably the shadow of his brother, the, his own heartbeat said, I got to get out of this place. I got to have my own life. And one day he went to his father and said, Dad, I, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to live here. I don't want to be a part of this family. I just want what's mine and I want to go do my own thing. Dad, I just can't do it anymore. And with a broken heart, the father looked at his son and said, if that's what you want to do. And he gave him what was his. He gave him his inheritance. And he watched his son walk away. With a broken heart, the father sat and watched, wondering what would happen, what would become of his son. And as his son left, his son found a lot of freedom and wealth. He found a lot of friends and wealth and he partied and he enjoyed life until one day the money was gone. One day all these things that he thought would bring him joy and excitement and friends, they had vanished. And he didn't know what to do. He had gone from his father's house to his own way, living on the top, having everything he wanted. He lost it all and he found himself working a very menial job, feeding pigs, eating, getting ready to eat the food that he was feeding the pigs. So meanwhile, while all this was going on, dad would every morning wake up and peek out of his tent and stand and look and wait to see if his son was coming home. Every day he would get up. The other brother would watch his father every day, look for his son. Every day. So as time passed, the son working in the pig, with the pigs realized, you know what? My father's servants live way better than this. Surely I could go and beg my father to just have me back as a servant and life would be better than this. That's what I'll do. And so he put down the pig feed and started the long, humble journey home, rehearsing in his mind that script. Day after day, closer and closer to home. Every one of those days, the father unbeknownst to the son, looking at the horizon, wondering if this would be the day. And one day the father looked out and here comes the son. And he has his script ready to go. He knows exactly what he's gonna say. He's gonna fall on his face. And he's gonna say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. Will you just have me back as a servant? And he wonders, will his father receive him? Will his father scold him? Will his father even wanna look at him? And as the son is walking and as the father sees the son, the Bible, Jesus says, the father dropped everything, dropped all of his dignity, 
and ran out and ran after his son. And as his son fell down, he scooped his son up and he hugged him. And he said, you're back in your home. And he wouldn't even let him finish his speech. And he said, let's throw a party. Let's get the most prized calf that we have, the most prized pig. Let's, let's slaughter this thing. Let's throw a party. My son is back. And that's exactly what he does. He puts his, 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 his cloak on his son and gives him the signet ring saying, you are my son. You were never not my son. As far as you were, as far away as you were, there was never a moment when you weren't my son. And he embraced him. He didn't need another servant. He had plenty of servants. What he wanted back was his son. His brother didn't really care for this that much. And the party and he stepped outside. He was frustrated because he's done everything his father had ever wanted, but he never felt like that kind of joy in his father. His father noticed that he wasn't there and he went out after him as well. And he took the other son in his arms and he said, son, I know you've done everything I've ever asked and you are who you are, but listen, your brother was dead and now he's alive. Come and celebrate. And in this story, Jesus helped the people of his time understand that God does not need more servants. God does not need people to do his bidding. God does not need more people to just come and do what he pleases. No, God desperately needs and wants his children to be loved by him, to have responsibilities of sons and daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that's who God is today. And I don't know where you are in that story, but I'm pretty confident you're somewhere in it because I'm somewhere in it. I don't know if life circumstances have propelled you away from a father in heaven who has created you to the point where you're not even sure if you were created by God. And you're in a space and a place in life that you're starting to realize, is this really what this is all about? And you wonder, is there a God who could ever love you and accept you, given the things that have happened to you and given the things that you have happened to others? But Jesus wants you to know that you have a Father who is looking for you, who sent His only Son to die on a cross to create a pathway home, and that when you come home, you are not received with any I told you so's. You are not received with harsh words. You are not received with, well, we'll see how you do, but you are received with the loving embrace of a father who is so desperate to see his children come home. And there is no hurt, and there is no pain, and there is no shame, and there is no mistake that could ever overwhelm that love of God for you, that the most important title for God in your life is not King of Kings, it's not Lord of Lords, it's not Redeemer, it's Father. It's Father. And so this morning, as the band sings this song, I would like to invite you to come home. See, the son in that story was never not the child of his father. No matter how far away he was from him, he was never not his son. There was just simply distance and there needed to be a reconciliation. And that's the way we all are. We all have these moments where we are far from our Father in heaven. But what Jesus did on the cross was create the road home, a way that we could be reconciled to God. So I want to invite you to come just as you are before your Father in heaven and let Him embrace you. The Son came and He did humble Himself. The Son came and He did repent and say, Father, I've sinned against you. But before he could get it out, before he could ask to be a servant, he said, are you crazy? And he was scooped up and loved. And that's what God wants to do for you today. Every one of us has been in that place. If we will turn to him, run to him, he will receive us. So in these moments, if you've never decided, if you've never felt the arms of your heavenly father wrapped around you, I believe deeply that in this moment he can do that. The song just says, come just as you are. Lay down your burdens. The Bible says that if we will confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive our sins. That if we confess that, yes, we've wandered and we've, or we've let our circumstances get in the way of this love, but he is so faithful and he will love us and he will give us this gift of eternal life and a journey with him in this life that is off the chart. So today's an invitation to come as you are. Maybe. You're here and you're the other son. Maybe you're a little frustrated. 
Maybe you're just a little disgusted with God's mercy. Maybe it's a challenge to you. Maybe this is a moment where you need to recognize that God is pursuing you too and wants you to understand his mercy that's extended to others. And that for some of us who have been a part of the family of God for a long time, God wants us to humble ourselves and be a part of a bigger party and participate in that moment in other people's lives as well. So we're going to sing this song and then I'm going to come and pray for us together. But just let this be a moment where you can experience God's grace and His love as your Father. Not as a dictator, not as a taskmaster. I grew up in a setting where I felt like I often heard this, Jesus died on the cross for you. That's what He did for you. Now what will you do for Him? The reality is that's not the point of it at all. The point of it is for us to live as His sons and daughters and to experience this life fully as His children. And in doing that, we naturally become all that he calls us to be. Come just as you are.